What's going on, Supernatural Life family, me familia, my kingdom family, my people. It's good to see you guys. I hope you are doing well on this wonderful Thursday morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're tuning in from. We got a good topic we're going to talk about today. I'm actually free-flowing in this teaching because I'm going to be talking from experience and just things that the Holy Spirit has downloaded to me over time. So we're going to let him speak. And you know, you can never go wrong as long as God is the one speaking through the vessel he chooses, right? But anyway, as you guys are jumping on here to let you know the topic, it is demonic portals, all right? Uh, before I jump into it, let's go ahead and like the video. Let's also share because you care. Amen. And that'll keep everything fair. <laughs> Hallelujah. So make sure that you like, share, and uh, get ready because I believe it is going to be a very good teaching, very simplistic, but at the same time will have depth. And I believe it will equip you guys to be able to go forward and uh, know how to not open demonic portals in your life. I have some things that I have to say uh, before I jump into the teaching, but I want to shout out where some of you guys are tuning in from. I haven't done this in a little while. Let me let me shout out where you're tuning in from. Let me talk about your town, city, country, nation, whatever you want to say. Oregon is in the house. All right, I see you. Atlanta, Hotlanta, Des Moines, Iowa. We have Florida, Australia, London, Minneapolis, Texas, Cape Town, the Philippines, Tallahassee, South Texas, Edinburgh, Tuscaloosa, <clears throat> excuse me, Holland, Amsterdam. See you guys real soon, like really soon. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Midlands in the UK. Amen. There's a look, look, Texas. There's a Midlands in the UK also. Colorado, California, Maryland. We got South Africa, Casper, Wyoming, North Carolina. We got six from Illinois. Yes, we do. New Zealand, South St. Petersburg, Florida. Trinidad, Trinidad, good to have you guys out there in the Caribbean, Tus uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, where Oral Roberts University is, right? Is it in Tulsa? I think so. New York, Billings, Montana, Oceanside, California, Lake County, Florida, out there in the beautiful place of Claremont, I believe. Kentucky, Hampton Roads, Virginia, VA, Virginia is for lovers, right? Indiana, New York City, Allen, that will change soon. El Paso, Texas, Michigan, Netherlands. Ah, we got Akragana showing up today. Alabama, Chester, Pennsylvania. Come on, Castle Rock, Colorado, Huntington Beach, beautiful Huntington Beach, California, one of my favorite spots. Muscle Bay, where else? North Carolina. Oh, take your yeah, yeah, Chris. I'm not. We're not going to sing Chopper. <laughs> I think it is. I think that's who it was. Germany, New Mexico, Namibia, Amen. Namibia, Delray Beach, Baton Rouge, San Antonio. Come on, I'm in prophesy. I'm going. I keep this memory good. Amen. Romania. It's good to see you guys. I think that's my friend. Leave you. Zambia, India. Sweden, I will see you guys real soon too. Amen. Canada, I need to come to you guys. Also, Australia, September will be a time to remember because I'm going to come out there with Jesus and we're going to have us a really good time in the, in the land down under. Uh, we're going to bring that Holy Ghost thunder and we might just bring a couple signs and wonders. <laughs> all right. Anyway, guys, remember to like and share as you're tuning in. Welcome all over the world. You guys are tuning in all over the world. I hope you guys are blessed. Hope your families are blessed. Um, I, wanted to, I want to put up, because I've talked about some places I'm coming to, really fast, let me go ahead and put up the uh, flyers from the Europe tour. I'm doing a Europe tour. I care about Europe so much that I'm going to plane hop to different places. Ain't that wonderful? You guys are on God's mind. So, I'm going to be in Ede, Holland, beautiful Holland. Only thing about Holland is I wish stuff stayed open past 5 p.m. But April 25th, 26th, 2024 in Ede, Holland, I will be out there. And uh, we will be with the Supernatural Life family doing our thing for Jesus Christ. Uh, then we will be in Sweden, Stockholm, Sweden, April 28th and 29th. So we will be having a good time out there in Sweden. It's been I haven't been to Sweden since like 2014. Then I'll be out there in Germany, May 3rd and 4th, Berlin, Germany, and w which was, 
You know, we're going to come tear some more walls down. Amen. And then I'm going to be in Drogheda Island, the great green land of Ireland. Drogheda Island, May 7th and May 8th. And then we are going to end, me, myself, myself and uh, Prophet Leon Dupria, we will be there. And who knows what's going to happen. All I know is it's going to be wild. It's going to be Holy Ghost wild. There's going to be a lot of demonstrations of the power of God. That'll be May 11th. That's an all-day conference. Listen. I'm doing it in Europe. So any of these places, if you want to be a part, you want to come see a country and you want to be attend revival, you can fly out wherever you are and come be a part. So I'm excited for all of these dates. One more time, bring that back up one more time. Eat Holland, Sweden, Germany, Ireland, and UK. Amen. Amen. So you guys can go on the website, www.thesupernaturallife.org. You do need to register because we do have limited seating and it is a very small fee. It's not a big fee to get a ticket, guys, but we had to do it this way for many reasons because the um, venues are so limited with seating. Things are different when you go into other nations. Some of the Americans don't understand this, which is fine. You know, <laughs> you can't complain. Right. Amen. So, We'll be in the other nations. We got limited seating. So please, guys, please go in there and register. All right? Go in there and register. If you guys are from these nations, you know how things are. So make sure that you do register for the venues. Um, and if you want to bring friends and family, make sure you register for the, register them also. But everything is on the website, www.thesupernaturallife.org. Now, and then when I get back, I will be back in America, and I will be heading to Baltimore, Maryland, and that's going to be for No Flesh 4 with my brother Live SP and a few others will be there. There will be, It will be Christian hip-hop going on and it will be revival. Amen. We're going to see the Holy Spirit do amazing things. It'll be just like normal, but we'll have some music involved. Amen. So um, also at the time of this recording, for all of you who are watching, Sunday, 12 p.m., EST or if you if you want to listen on Spotify 12 p.m. wherever you are I'm having a new song dropping it's called Talk About It it's going to be featuring my my one of my sons in the faith the amazing awesome anointed evangelist Isaiah Poche he will be with me on that song and trust me it's going to make all the haters smile that's all I'm going to say so it's going to be a good time amen so look forward to that on Sunday 12 p.m. I'll be dropping my next song and we will see all the haters cry. It'll be good. But I got love for them in the song. So it's going to be it's going to be a good time. It's going to it's called it's going to be like a haters anthem. Amen. You know, Jesus answered the the Pharisees a couple times. They were haters. So he called them a whitewash tomb and and <laughs> a bunch of dead bones on the inside and all that stuff. So, you know, I said, let me make me a good song. But mine's blessing them, you know, because I want them all to make it to heaven. But it's a good song I wanted to release. You'll get a good laugh. But at the same time, it goes hard. It goes hard in heaven. Amen. All right. Anyway, um, I want to make sure I'm hitting everything else. Oh, if you want to get involved with the ministry, look, I'm going to tell you, we're seeing growth right now. Um, it's amazing what we see happening all over the world. Europe is thriving. America is thriving. We're getting, we got India. We got South America. We have Africa. Uh, you name it. We got Australia. We have people all over the world involved in this ministry, plugged in. We have leaders that are amazing. You guys want to get involved, get involved, get involved with the discipleship side of this ministry. Get plugged in. You go to www.thesupernaturallife.org, become a forerunner. Um, and also you can do that on YouTube, but I do recommend the website, but you can do it on YouTube. You just hit the join link and there's a forerunner option that you can join on there. Also, that's a way you can sow into us allow us to continue to travel the world, do what we do, see souls saved, and also get involved. And it's a way for me to invest back into you through the Word of God. Amen? Because the Lord said, make disciples of all nations, and that's what we're doing. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? And getting filled with the Holy Ghost and pushing them out into their cause and destiny. That's what we do here. All right, guys. So I'm going to jump into the teaching. I think I got every I got everything that needs to be said that is said for right now at the time of this. If you guys are watching in the future, obviously you probably fast forwarded some. Hopefully you're on the teaching part. But God bless you guys, and let's see what Jesus has to say. So we're going to talk about demonic portals. Now, why I say the word portal, really what I'm saying is openings in the realm of the Spirit that is causing... Satan, the ability to attack you. Now, 
Satan can only attack you by your belief system. Now, what do I mean? If you believe a lie, you give Satan a place to lie. Now, not, you know, lie in your life, lie down in your life, come into your life. So if you believe in a lie, Satan can come in and afflict your life. Um, if you believe something contrary to the word of God and it's your absolute truth inside, meaning that you believe this lie so much that it is your truth, guess what? It's going to manifest in your life by some way because the realm of the spirit, the spiritual laws will line up to what you're believing. Okay. That's why we put our faith in Christ. We put our faith in, in the word of God. Because if we put our faith in the word of God, we have a strong tower we run to. We have a strong foundation. Nothing can penetrate that strong tower, okay? Meaning they can shoot fire. The enemy can shoot fiery darts. He can shoot witchcraft at you. He can do whatever he has to do. He cannot penetrate the strong tower. Who, <clears throat> excuse me. Who is Jesus Christ? Amen. He is the strong tower. But if you believe a lie, the demon will come and have a demon will come. The devil will come with his demonic hordes or send his demonic cords and attack your life to get you out of your assignment, to take you out early so that you cannot go and do more kingdom work. Look, here's the total truth. Some people leave this earth before their time because they cannot stop believing in a lie. We see people that just drop, drop off left and right because they can't line up to the word of God, which brings life and life more abundantly. Now, Sometimes God does take people early, and he has his reasons for that. But also the devil comes and takes people out early, okay? <clears throat> so, you know, I believe sometimes people get long lives because God has just given them a lot of grace and mercy to make things right, <laughs> you know? So there's a lot of scenarios that can play into this. But I'm ta talking about this today because I want you guys that are watching this today, you guys and girls that are watching this today, I want you guys and girls to be able to, to live to the max capacity of the, through the, in the kingdom of God and for you to feel fulfill what God has called you to do and you not miss one moment of that. And if you have missed moments, you'll be able to uh, have it come back. Amen? Double fold, double, triple, quadruple, a hundredfold. Amen? So we're going to talk about demonic portals, um, some of the ways that these portals get opened in your life. Now, when we read the Bible, we see... Many scenarios of the realm of the spirit becoming open to believers. I mean, you look at Ezekiel; he saw the saw the ty different types of angels. You look at uh, uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, Nehemiah, Isaiah. I mean, uh, not Isaiah; I said Isaiah, Amos. All these all these prophetic books. You see them receiving the word of the Lord through a vision. You see them encountering angels. You see them hearing the word of the Lord through some supernatural means. So the realm of the spirit is very real. If you go in the New Testament, you see even that uh, Jesus had angels descending, ascending up on him, angels coming to strengthen him. Um, we see a part where Peter, they thought Peter's angel was knocking on the door. So I'm saying all this to let you know that the realm of the spirit is, is very real. And the angels come in and out uh, spiritual entities come in and out through portals, through openings. If we praise the Lord in the church, or we praise the Lord in our homes, or we praise the Lord out in public, it opens up the atmosphere. It opens the heavens for us. Now, you are an open heaven, amen, because you are, you're walking with Jesus. But when we come together corporately, and when we pray, and when we worship, and when we glorify God, it opens up the atmosphere to receive the host of heaven to receive the angels, to receive the miracles, to receive the healings, to receive uh, people, to receive where people can get deliverance. I mean, the angels come in, they start fighting in the in the realm of the spirit to set people free. The Holy Spirit comes, sets people free, whatever it may be. So we we open up an atmosphere when we come together to praise and worship, when we give glory to Jesus Christ. Now, that same reality is true to the demonic realm. And now this is what I'm going to jump in to the demonic portal aspect, okay? If you're just tuning in, it's very important that you like this video and share, okay, guys? Let's get as many eyes on this as we possibly can. And moderators, help me to get these uh, views up, okay? So more people can come and it can shove it out to the subscribers and followers. Okay, so demonic portals, the way that, the same way I just talked about what was, how we open up the atmosphere for the Holy Spirit, we're going to come over here and we're going to talk about how it opens up for the demonic realm. I'll give you an example. We talk about generational curses. Now, let me let me kill a big, big elephant 
in the room really fast. Let me go ahead and take this thing out, okay? <sighs> this is not going to set well with some folks, but I'm going to say something. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's going to mess up some theology, but I can back up what I'm about to say. The Bible tells us, I believe it's in, in I think it's in Deuteronomy, or somebody maybe can help me. I'm speaking off of my head right now. Every man that is hung up on a tree is cursed. It says Jesus was hung up on that tree so we could be what? Blessed. Amen. And all of the generational curses that you could ever suffer with, everything that your family, yeah, Galatians 3.13, yes. Uh, I think it's Deuteronomy Old Testament. But um, everything you could suffer with from your family's mistakes, the moment that you said yes to Jesus Christ, you got filled with the Holy Spirit. If you read also in the book of Acts, there's a place, I believe, where, uh, where it says that when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're blessed up into how many generations? A thousand generations. If you're blessed because you're filled with the Holy Spirit up to a thousand generations, then why do we continue to focus on our yesterdays and being a cursed people? Can you, uh, yes, it's Deut Deuteronomy 21 to 22. If a man has committed a sin deserving of death, he is put to death and, hang, they, and, and you hang him on a tree. Amen. So if you're blessed to a thousand generations, why are we so focused on what our, our, our mom, our dad, our grandma, our great grandma, our great grandpa, our great, great, great grandma, great, great, great grandpa? Why are we so focused on that? I believe that we see people suffering with a lot of generational curses still because of bad preaching and bad theology, okay? Now, now I do have teachings where I talk about generational curses because some people are living under generational curses because they, they are not taking the reality of how blessed they are onto their shoulders, onto their life, into their life, actually. They're not, they're not taking that in. So you, you'll hear people, and this isn't no offense to anybody or no, not trying to offend any preacher, but if it offends you, something's wrong with you because you made the preaching an idol. Amen. You made a, a theology an idol. But anyway, as all my, I'm just shooting it like it is, right? I, I do the teachings on the generational curses because people are still believing that they're cursed. So I'll preach against the curse. And sometimes God will give me a word of knowledge in the midst of, of, you know, speaking to somebody concerning something their mom or their grandma did, and we find out they're still living under that lie. So there is a place to teach guys against a curse, but you have to bring proper theology after you have broken the lie, after you have broken the curse through the blood of Jesus Christ, which he has, he's died for all the curses, right? Um, after you brought the truth, you have to bring proper theology so now they can live through their blessed inheritance, okay? Through their blessed inheritance. But you have some people uh, that teach that you are generationally cursed until you go to the courtroom of, of heaven and you handle it. No, guys, Jesus went to the courtroom of han heaven and handled every curse that could ever be done, handled every sin that could ever be committed. Do you understand? Like, <laughs> there's going to be a whole lot of legalistic, legalistic work going on. You're going to have to go and be the lawyer for everything. Jesus is your lawyer. Jesus is the one who paid the price. So I know that this might be hurting some feelings and messing you up because some of you guys live and breathe off of generational curses. But look, I'm not generationally cursed. I am generationally blessed. OK, the Bible tells me in New Covenant theology that I am a blessed person. I am not an oppressed person. I'm a blessed person. I am not a stressed person. I'm a blessed person, not a generationally cursed person. Now, that is the truth. And the Bible also lets us know that the truth will set you free. So the truth is the truth. And it doesn't matter what you believe. Because the word of God is yes and amen. His promises are yes and amen. And one of the pro promises is you are generationally blessed. You are not generationally cursed. There's all kinds of charismatic teaching out there. I'm a charismatic. But my goodness, I look at some of this charismatic theology and I go, what in the world is going on here? Like, <clears throat> like 15 ways to pray to make you, make you have a better day. I mean, I get it, okay? But just have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Just... You know, just fall in love with him and things will line up, guys. Just because you have a bad day doesn't mean you have a generational curse. Just because you have a bad day doesn't mean that you have a new demon. Okay, some of us are so demon focused that we can't live in the joy of the Lord. 
All right. We got to stop this demon focused stuff. And I'm going to be talking about demonic portals on this, but I just need to give you guys a proper foundation to stand on the, the truth, the truth. Do you think Jesus went and died the gruesome death that he, he did so that you guys could walk around and talk about how messed up your life is all the time? No, it's time to take ownership where you need to take ownership and accept what? Accept the truth. All right. Accept the truth. Amen. Because the truth will set you free. Now, look, y'all listen to who you want to be led by the Holy Spirit. God works all things together. Uh, for the good of those who love him. There's nothing wrong with learning about generational curses. Not against it. So I don't want you guys to think I'm attacking it or I've changed my mind on something. I just will stand on the truth because the truth is what needs to be spoken. And the truth is, is you're blessed. If you're a Christian filled with the Holy Spirit, born again, you're blessed. You have a blessed inheritance. You're a royal priesthood. You're a child of God. You're a son of God. You're, you're a daughter of God. I mean, what comes with that? I mean, thousands upon thousands of blessings come with that. Amen. So, Let's talk about demonic portals now that I've said all that and got that out the way. Demonic portals. So how do you open, how do demonic portals get opened in people's life? It's very simple, guys. One, believing in a lie. If you believe a lie, for example, if you go, I'm ugly, I'll never be anything. I'm just like my mommy. I'm just like my daddy, meaning in the bad way. If you believe that there's a demonic portal that's opened in your life, through that belief, through that mindset, and the enemy knows it in the realm of the spirit. And the realm of the spirit has a signal go off, and then the enemy goes, oh, look, that's a Christian that's believing a lie. Let me go and oppress this Christian because they're sitting there believing that mess. Now, God will give us grace. Watch this. God will give us grace in our learning process. But if you know better, yet you still believe the lie, yet you know the truth, but you believe the lie, that's when the attacks come. Some of you know the truth, yet you believe the lie. I'll say that again. Some of you know the truth, but yet you believe the lie. And then you're, you're, you don't understand why you're continuously attacked, because how can you know the truth, yet you believe a lie? The Bible tells us, take every thought captive that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. All right. Putting it into the obedience of the Lord. Listen, if you're a Christian, you know the Bible, you read the Bible, you read his promises, you know his truth, but yet you'll believe a lie. Wouldn't the devil take, if you were the devil, wouldn't you take advantage of that? You'd be like, hey man, this, this person's saying they believe something they don't even believe. Yeah, let me go have a heyday with them right now because I have an opening in the realm of the spirit to come and smack them upside the head, you know, so that, that happens. Now, an, another way you can open up, so believe in a lie, right? If you go and open up, do other spiritual things outside of the Holy Spirit, you open yourself up to divination, to seduction, to uh, uh, rebellion, all this stuff, right? You, uh, sickness, disease. If you go and you open another door outside of Jesus Christ, Jesus is the door. He is the way, the truth, and the life. If you go and you open this door in the realm of the Spirit, it stays open until you choose to close it. So when you go and you do New Age, when you do crystals to bring good vibes, or when you go and do Reiki to bring healing, when you do tarot cards to hear from another voice, when you do psychic readings, whatever it may be, you've opened the door. And here's the thing is until you actually renounce and repent of doing those things, the door is staying open because now you're definitely believing a lie and you're actually doing something illegal. So it's an illegal move in the realm of the spirit. So you are illegally moving in the spirit. So when you illegally move in the spirit, what happens? The enemy comes in through the door you left open like a thief because you were a thief going in through another door outside of the door of Jesus Christ. And now the enemy's coming through that same door that you left open and is oppressing and attacking your life. Some of us watching this today are attacked and we can't break free of poverty. We can't break free of the sickness and disease that's going on in our family because we have opened up avenues and we have and doors yet we haven't went back and shut them <clears throat> through the understanding of the truth of the word right repent repent means this go from wrong believing to right believing i believe this way now i believe that way lord forgive me i i, I don't know why i was doing that i shut that door and then what will happen is as the door is being shut the holy spirit is left with you and the holy spirit will set you free isn't that wonderful i think it's amazing so when you go 
and you mess with these 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 messed up things like ritualistic things, witchcraft. Oh, because my ancestors did it, I'm going to do it. You hang on to this ancestral stuff. I mean, there's even teachings in the body of Christ talking about the end. We got our ancestral heritage. No, get out of that stuff. You have a new heritage. It's in, it's in the kingdom of God. We need to stop that stuff too. But, you know, we we go and we open doors through the wrong means. We wonder why we're being attacked. Well, you have opened a demonic portal. You've opened a demonic door where the enemy can come in and attack you. Even this, I'll, I'll address this another way. Watch this. Another demonic portal is yes, it can come through tattoos even. Even, even, even getting certain tattoos can open up the door for the enemy to attack you. All right. Like me, I have a, I got a tattoo on my chest called warrior and I had to, man, my <laughs> life was a fight. And I was like, man, why is my life a fight all the time? I had to go and renounce and repent of getting warrior tattooed on me because I'm living the life and I was, my life was a constant fight and I just got tired of constantly fighting and it was a stuff attached to the tattoo that I uh, had once got. So so tattoos are markings that bring a, a spiritual significance. That's why I tell people, they'll say, Daniel, should I get a tattoo? I'll say, what's the reason behind it and what's the benefit and what's it going to do for you? Because what you do tattoo on your body is also going to correlate in the realm of the spirit. It's a correlation. Okay, now I have my son's initials tattooed on my body, but watch this. My son's initials are attached to the to the warrior tattoo. They're all ta- attached together. So now I've been watching my son have to act like a warrior and fight too. So now my son is taking on that wrong aspect, all right? There's nothing wrong with being a warrior for the kingdom, but you shouldn't have to fight unnecessarily. So I do have my son's initials. I, is it wrong to get your kid's initials tattooed on you? I, I can't say yes or no to that. Some people want me to make an absolute on tattoos. I, I can't make an absolute. I'm not going to be the legalistic guy. I would tell you it's probably better to to shy away from that just because, you know, there's a lot that goes into this. There is significance on who's giving you the tattoo. There's significance on the needle. What needle ha- has that needle touched other areas? So there's there's a lot that goes into this. All right. If you do get one, you want it to be as clean as possible. We just we, we have to be smart when it comes to when we just go to places, all right? You just go into some tattoo shop with, with, and most of them people in there, let me be honest with you, not all of them, but most of them are into some weird stuff, okay? They're, most of them, I got weird beliefs. Most of them are into new age things. Not all of them, though. I know some of you tattoo artists will watch this and get upset with me. Listen, I'm not saying all of you. I just, just, I'm just saying it's better for the body of Christ to be smart, use wisdom, and know that if you get a dragon tattooed on you, you're probably going to deal with the dragon. If you get a something from Eastern theology on you, you're probably going to deal with that demon. If you get Buddha tattooed on the lower back, you're going to probably deal with Buddha. You see what I'm saying? If you get a butterfly uh, somewhere because you know you're going through a metamorphosis in your life and you don't know what you're supposed to be, well, you're going to get saved and probably have to deal with the butterfly. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we got to be smart, guys, when it comes to to getting getting that type of stuff. Guess what? And if you did open the door through getting a tattoo, you can actually repent and it can become a testimony and you can be a testimony to other people why what that tattoo brought into your life and the significance of why you should probably veer away from doing it. Okay. Again, I'm not, I'm not totally 100% against tattoos. Okay. I'm not going to be the absolutist. I would, but I veer more on the side of probably better not to get them just because of the spiritual significance. All right. So we covered that other, um, other things that now this even goes for henna. All right. So I'm, I'm even t- putting anything on your body. I mean, if you put a new age henna tattoo on you, even it, it, it can cause a lot of mess. OK, so it, it, it's the act. It's the initial act that opens the door. It isn't the stain on of the ink or the stain on of the thing. So let me let me say that it's the initial act that causes the door to be open because you can always close the door through repentance and renouncing. OK, so it's the initial act that opens the door. It isn't a, a door that is continually open. You're not. It's like if you attack somebody and they die, that's an act that is a one time thing. It isn't like that person is continually, you know, being over and over and over again unless they go to hell. And that's not good. But you get what I'm saying. <laughs> so there's a spiritual significance to that. But it's an act that takes place that that opens the door. So 
the act of getting that tattoo is the door opener. Keeping the tattoo, even if you have the tattoo, even after you repent, renounce, takes the power, the spiritual power out of it. All right. But why would you put yourself under unnecessary attack? Right. Um, another way that we see demonic portals opened in people's life or demonic doors opened in people's life. But now look, this is going to be tough. When you're smoking, vaping, doing drugs, all of this is actually demonic portals. Watch. Here's why. It's the, the spirits are made of air. Okay. So it, when you see spirits in the realm, when you see in the realm of the spirit, you see these demons, they look like orbs. They look like they're flying around. They're actually air and they enter in like an orb, a spiritual orb. They'll enter in through your mouth, through your ears, through your eyes, through any opening. Look, any opening in your body, demons can enter in through those openings. Okay. So when you're, when you're smoking stuff, when you're inhaling, it's actually easier for the enemy to get in, okay? So doing that stuff is actually access points. Even, even gluttony, like being, idolizing a food can be an open door in the, demonic, uh, in the demonic realm. Like you just, every day you got to have that pizza or you can't live. Look, and this is going to rub some people wrong. I say this all the time and sometimes people manifest. Coffee. I can't live without my coffee. It can, actually, guys, it's the addiction, the idolization of that that will open up the demonic door, okay? But this is why grace is there. You have grace. Grace is there to empower the change and to close the door, okay? Grace is also there. Just because you have a problem with something doesn't always mean you have a demon coming in, but it's like Russian roulette. You just keep p p pulling that trigger until eventually... It comes in and it attacks you. So there's the idolization of stuff. Really, at the end of the day, when you idolize an item or idolize food or idolize something, it's an open door, okay? And what often will come in behind these things is a spirit of lust, okay? So it's an open door. This idolization of this stuff will open you up to a uh, spirit of lust. And then you start lusting more than lusting after the food, You'll start saying or lusting after that cigarette or lusting after those drugs. You'll notice yourself not lusting on phones with women or men. The next thing you know, you'll notice you're actually talking to people the wrong way. The next thing you know, you're in full blown adultery. The next or you're at fornication or whatever it may be. So these things start leading you down worse paths. It's a gradual decline. So when you open these doors, it's just not the initial opening of the door, it's also what the enemy that comes in, how he's going to try to signal his friends to come in and continue to attack your life, okay? So this stuff can be uh, how you open up demonic portals around your life to come and attack you. Now, there is the coming in of the demonic thing, and then there is the out outward affliction of the demonic thing. When I say the outward affliction, it means you have created an atmosphere where the enemy gets to attack you. I'll give you an example. You can be in your home. Your home is demonically inspired. I mean, you've got a lot of demonic stuff going on, and it's actually external effects of what's going on within the home. You can go into a church, and you feel the presence of God. You leave the church. You go back into your home. You feel the demonic presences again. It's because of the, the, the portals or the atmosphere that has been opened through the actions or, or through the belief systems of the people within the home. Okay? That's why it's important that the men of God in the household that is supposed to protect and cover the household have the right mindset. Women, yes, you can you can stand there and, and pray for your husband and stuff like that. So you're you're the second line of defense. All right. They're the first line. You're the second line of defense. So women, yes, you can keep your home in a good place, even if the husband's acting half crazy. But anyway, you're the second line. And then when it gets to the children, unless you got a really Holy Ghost filled son or daughter, It'll attack them and then the whole household's all over the place. So that's the external stuff of the attack of like demonic atmospheres and stuff by opening those doors. All right. So even the smoking, all that stuff can open witchcraft. That can open it up. Lie, be, believing lies, that can open it up. My goodness. Watch this. Another way that you can have demonic portals that are opened in your life is who are you attaching yourself to? Is this attachment being a blessing to you or is it causing you trouble and pain? Trust me, I know about this one. Pretty, I think I know about this one better than most people know, even in Christianity. Who you attach yourself to will determine what demons will afflict you, 
All right. If you're consciously as a Christian attaching yourself to certain individuals, you're going to also get their problems and their issues. Okay. Um, you can attach yourself to certain individuals that have demonic issues and they will start to drain you because they're illegal in the spirit. Listen, there is illegal partnerships that happen in the spirit. Watch this, where one party is right, one party is wrong, but it looks like they're walking in agreement because they're walking in agreement in an area of deception. Okay, so there's a deception in the relationship. So the one party will be right, one party will be wrong, but they're walking together. How can two walk together unless they agree? Amen. But deception can be in there causing them to agree. I'm taking this a little bit deeper than what you guys probably thought I thought I would. And then the party that doesn't have the problems are now gaining problems because of the attachment right here to this party. Now they're almost because they're in agreement. They're in one. Now the one that has all the issues that may be operating in witchcraft and deception, whatever. Now this party is unnecessarily taking on those attacks <clears throat> because it's a demonic portal that has been opened. Now, if you're thinking about your husband or your wife where I'm talking about this, it doesn't count. Marriage is covered by God. God's going to handle it. Don't look at marriage that way. If you're a believer in a marriage, God has got you. There's grace. I'm talking about people that are not married to you, people that are outside. Watch this. People you're calling your girlfriend and boyfriend. I want to even tell you this. Be careful saying girlfriend and boyfriend because it call it shows a relational soul tie. It's better to say I'm courting somebody and that's more in a, in, yes, there's a soul tie there, but there's a friendship there versus I'm dating this person. This is my girlfriend or my boyfriend. All right. That's, that's Americanized terms and stuff like that, guys. We need to get back to courting instead of attaching ourselves unnecessarily. And the next thing you know, our hearts are hurt. I broke and we kissed them. We made out, we did all this stuff. And now we got all these demonic portals and stuff open in our life. Um, because of all the stuff that's going on. So that's another thing that brings a lot of demonic atmospheres into people's life is who are they attached to? Who have they yoked themselves to? So who you yoke yourself to is very important. Now, am I saying don't go hang around sinners? Don't go hang? No, I'm not saying that. That's for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about these are people that you are willingly drawing yourself, connecting yourself to. You're going to deal with the results of bringing a close connection there, all right? Like even me as, as, as somebody who is doing discipleship, if I see in discipleship a person is, try, is, is not really there to be discipled there for the wrong reasons, I'll move and separate myself, and I will uh, not, not saying I won't be available to the person, but I'm not going to yoke myself to their issues to where their issues become my issues too. I'm not saying don't carry their burden, but you carry their burden in a light way, not in a heavy way, because Jesus is ultimately going to carry that burden. So we, we are long suffering with people. We do that stuff, but not in the sense to where we take on all of their issues. That's Jesus's job to take on their issues because he took on their issues at the cross of Jesus Christ. OK, so we need to be careful also who our connections are. Uh, to because we're going to deal with their issues. That's why when you're parts of ministries, OK, what you come under is what's going to afflict you too, all right? It's very important you're involved with people that are listening to the Holy Spirit, being led and guided by the Holy Spirit so that you're not also affected by, you know, it's, it's okay for a leader to make a mistake. Let me make sure I qualify all my state statements. It's no problem for a leader to learn and go through things. I'm talking, I, what I'm talking about is you're, you're under a ignorant leader, meaning that this leader is somebody that is just being ignorant and they're just being stupid. And like you're, you're dealing with the effects of that, like for months and months and months, you're praying, nothing's changing. There's probably time to, to make some changes at that point. You know, why are you going to waste your time with somebody who doesn't want to change? Right. Why are you going to deal with those demonic, uh, demonic, uh, portals and stuff that these people are bringing into your life? You know, when you're, when you're attached to somebody that has a bunch of issues, your mind gets more focused on them than it does on Christ. If you're attached to somebody that is sucking your attention from Jesus, you probably need to go ahead and make some changes because now that person is trying to make you make them an idol instead of Jesus Christ being the idol. All right. So also attachments, who you're attached to is also a big deal. If you're watching this, guys, go ahead, smash that like button and share, okay? Because you care. Amen. All right. Um, an another way, certain books you read, 
It's very important. You're very careful with what types of books you're reading because, listen, the book is revelation from a human mind inspired by some source. The book you read is an inspi- is inspi- is inspired through the human mind from some source, be it is demonic or be it is Holy Spirit inspired, okay? I would recommend that you read books, okay? You read books. Yes, the Book of Mormon is a open door. Absolutely. <laughs> Just like the uh uh what's the the Muslim book, the Torah not not no, that's the the Quran, all that stuff. Yes, that you don't want to read that stuff if you have it in your house. I would recommend probably not hanging around it too much. I know some people like to study it for apologetics. There's grace on some of that stuff, but if you just have it there hanging out for no reason, I would I wouldn't I wouldn't hang on to it. Amen. Um Mean, meaning this, if you're reading it for the intention of maybe getting involved in it, that's probably a bad thing, okay? Like if you go read the book, The Secret, <laughs> you're going to get some secrets, all right? All right? You're going to get some bad secrets. So what you read is very important uh, to to t- to have that in mind. If you're reading a book on how to do witchcraft, what do you think is going to happen? If you're reading a book on the New Age manifestation stuff, what do you think you're what, what do you think is going to happen? All right. So when you're reading, make sure that you pray and ask the Lord, is this a book that's really going to be helpful to me? The Holy Spirit will speak to all of you guys. I promise he'll tell you what you need to do. He'll let you know if he wants you to read a certain type of book for wisdom so that you can go and attack the kingdom of darkness, whatever it needs to be. But ask the Holy Spirit. Your coverage in the realm of the Spirit is being led by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will lead you into all all truth. Okay, but there's really no reason a, a Christian needs to read a book on how to do witchcraft when you can learn how to operate in the Holy Spirit by reading the Bible. <laughs> Amen. So, like, why would you go read these books? There's really no sense in it. There's no sense in it at all. So, C.S. Lewis is great. I like C.S. Lewis. No problem with C.S. Lewis. Um, there is Christian fictional books that are fine. Like I said, check the source, check the inspiration, what spirit is behind it. No, all but look, set, I know this is why I got to qualify this. I see p- some people in the comments. All secular books are not bad. All right. All secular books are not bad. Business books are not bad. Not all of them ba- are bad. All right. Ask the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will show you, right, will show you what book you need to read. Amen. What book you need to read. So ultimately, when it comes to books, ask the Holy Spirit. I've learned this. This is one thing I've learned. If I touch a book and I feel an intense heaviness attached to that book, I won't get it. The Holy Spirit will usually, when I, I can usually tell by touching things and touching people uh, what spirit has inspired that, that thing, okay? Like sometimes I'll be praying for people. I can tell they've been into witchcraft just by touching them, and I feel this icky, like cringy feeling will come over me. I'll be like, you've been doing witchcraft. I can just tell by a touch, you see? So uh, the Holy Spirit will give you the wisdom and guidance and understanding on how how to know if something is uh, acceptable to Him for you to be taking in, for you to be doing. Amen. Um, some uh, some other things. Oh, here's another thing that opens up demonic portals: movies. All right, watching certain things, what you let in your eyes, will open up demonic portals in your life. Will open up demonic atmospheres in your life. If you're playing a movie that has a lot of sexual immorality in it. You have kids in your household, but yet you just want to watch the movie. What do you think is going to enter in to your household? You are entertaining sexual immorality. And some people will watch it as Christians. This is what some Christians do. Oh, I'm strong enough. I can watch this. There is not a Christian in this world. There is not a Christian in this world that can watch that stuff and not be affected. You hear me? You're not that, listen, you're not that tough. And if you do think you're tough, that's pride. And the enemy loves to open up and come in through the door of pride. So men and women that think y'all are super strong, y'all can just watch whatever you want to know, you're going to get affected in some way. He's going to come in and steal through some way because that's what he does. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's looking for an access point. He'll use that movie that you're entertaining to come in and afflict your life and start taking little things here and there. You'll be like, man, why is... Why am I losing money over here? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? Because you have opened a demonic portal through watching that mess, through watching immorality, 
Let me tell you guys. I'll tell you guys why immorality is wrong, why you shouldn't be watching people doing stuff. First of all, the marriage bid is for man and women, man and woman, period. Nothing else. Nothing else is acceptable. Man, woman. That's what's supposed to be. Anything outside of the bounds of biblical marriage is immoral, is wrong, is demonic. The enemy thrives off of this of sex outside of marriage it's actually one of his main sources of power okay when he can get two people to come together illegally he can bring some of the nastiest demonic attacks on your life that you've ever seen now the enemy will bless an unbeliever doing his bidding that's why it looks like in the world some people are blessed okay but yet they're doing bad things. Listen, the blessings of God, uh, the blessings is for the righteous and the unrighteous, but the enemy will cause people to be blessed by um, allowing them to do things because it's destroying people, right? If you have some guy out there that's demonically inspired that's just sleeping with a bunch of women or vice versa, a woman that's doing that, it's doing the kingdom of darkness's bidding. So they get to enjoy it. He'll probably send them some money, some good stuff and all this to keep them going, to keep them running, running in his kingdom and keep doing his bidding because they're, you know, they're, they're Satan's agent, right? Um, but in the kingdom of God, if you're a Christian, yet you are participating in the same way, I mean, <clears throat> you, can't, you can't expect that the enemy isn't going to come attack you. So there is no excuse, guys. You cannot make an excuse for being immoral. It's impossible. Any Look, and if you struggle, guys, listen, if you struggle, it's one thing. If you accept it, it's another thing. What do I mean struggle? Look, we live in a fallen world. You can walk outside. Who knows what you'll see? You don't know. In this day and age, you might walk outside. You might see somebody in the bushes doing something. It's just the truth. I know that I've had friends that go to San Francisco, California. They'll look down and there's people walking around butt naked everywhere. You, you, you're not going to be able to avoid this stuff. It's just something that we're, we're going to have to deal with. There may come a time where people will just walk around topless or something. We don't know. But is that going? do you not have enough self-control that even the person that's like that, they still don't deserve the gospel. I would say the solution in those times is to give them the gospel so that they'll cover up their shame. You see what I'm saying? Um, instead of just walking around looking half crazy. Anyway, anyway, uh, there could be a time for that. So, you, yes, people will struggle. Some of you guys are struggling right now. You don't want to fight this stuff and all that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that are like, I want to open this door. And I don't care what God thinks. I don't care what my family thinks. I don't care what my leaders, my pastor, my apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. I don't care what they think. I'm going to do it anyway. That's a dangerous spot. Now you've went from sin to iniquity to transgression. And once you're in transgression, you don't care what nobody thinks. Okay, you, you get, you're giving yourself, you're as close to having a depraved mind that you possibly can. Okay, you're giving, you're giving yourself over to depravity. So it's not okay to sleep around. It's one of the best, biggest ways you're going to open up a demonic portal. I don't care how, how much your stomach is turning, how many butterflies you got, how many flips you want to jump. It ain't worth jumping in the bed with that man or woman if they are not your husband and not your wife. Because I promise you, you will get a STD, a sexually transmitted demon, 100% guaranteed. And that thing will have atmospheres just messing everything. I mean, that, that demon will cause atmospheres to show up where everything's messed up. Amen. So, you know, if you guys, okay, some of you are watching this, you are even, uh, shacking up. You're going to, it's a demonic atmosphere. So another way to open up demonic portals, shack up, have the appearance of evil. The Bible tells us to abort, avoid the parents of evil. Some of you are justifying living together with a man or woman, for 13, 14 years because you have children. J Jesus doesn't care about that. I'm, I'm sorry, he doesn't. He cares about you being married to the one you've been with 13 years. And I'm here to hurt feelings. I am. I'm here to offend you for the gospel's sake. I want you to be convicted, and I want you to get angry at me if I'm hurting your feelings, because you know why? There's a spirit in you that doesn't want to hear what I have to say. You cannot be shacking up, guys. You cannot be living together and think everything's going to be all right. You cannot be an example to the kingdom. OK, there is grace for you to get married, but you can't do that. It's going to open up a demonic atmosphere and a demonic portal. Amen. Some of you come to revival meetings and you meet with me and you and then you expect me not to reveal the fact that you're living together. I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to say, hey, guys, you can't do that. And now this is a man who did that, that had to repent and had to make a decision. That stuff's not OK. 
Just because I did it don't mean you should do it because I know the results of doing it. I know that you'll have plagues come into your house. Watch this. If people are living that way and you're a Christian, yet you are in the appearance of evil, I've seen plagues come into the house, pestilences come into the house, sicknesses for no reason. Uh, You start to have issues. Now, look, some of you, listen, some of you may be like this. We're living together, but we're not sleeping together. You're sleeping together spiritually. You're still together, all right? You might as well go on and do it because you're still there. You understand? You're still, you're still locked in together, huh? So, so in, the, in the realm of the Spirit, they're seeing it different. They're seeing it as, hey, this, them demons are going, they're together, right? And they are. You're spiritually fornicating with one another because, look, how can a man or woman be in the same? You're, you're not tricking me. Y'all doing something. Y'all giving pecks on the key, cheeks. You're touching something somewhere. I'm not stupid. I know what goes on. And we, we, this is what happens. This is what's funny, right? The people will do this, right, Mark? They'll be like, we live together, but we're not sleeping together. Okay, so y'all, y'all don't have no physical interaction whatsoever. No, we've got self-control. All right, whatever, whatever. You walk around in the towel. You, you, you can't be in your PJs. You're covered up all day long. So, something's going on. Something's going on. He saw you in your pajamas, and he went to the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being straight up. I'm just being straight up. It's a demonic portal, and it is a problem in society today. So, you know, you can you can tell me whatever you want. If you're getting offended, get married. <laughs> if you're getting offended, get married in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Make it right. Ah, come on, man. Help us, Jesus. <laughs> I'm telling you, a lot of people get mad at me when I speak about this stuff. They can't stand it. Who's he think he is? He made mistakes. Yes, I made a lot of mistakes. But why do you want to make them? I'd rather be able to stand in front of Jesus Christ and not have blood on my hands because I didn't tell you the truth. Because the truth will get you set free. And look, you don't have to marry that person. What am I saying? Just because you live together. If that person's making you miserable, you think you're going to marry them and they're not, it's still not going to be miserable. <laughs> Marriage ain't going to fix that issue. There's a reason you're miserable. I'm going to marry him to save him. I'm going to marry her to save her. No, you're not. You're going to live years of hell. And then you're going to want a divorce later on. And there ain't none of that. You, you, this, this, that. you don't get that option with the knowledge that you have. And if you do, I'm not saying that there's not grace, that you can't repent, that God won't cover you. But why would you put yourself through hell and put your kids through hell for, by, for a bad mistake that you could have avoided. Amen. So you don't have to marry a person for the sake of marrying a person. Well, we have a child together. We need to. No, you don't. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to suffer for no reason. You don't have to marry your abuser. Huh? You don't have to marry the manipulator. You don't have to marry the narcissist. You don't have to do that. There's so many people that are living together. I'm hitting this issue hard. There's a reason that are complaining, that are wanting the blessings of God, but they're complaining but they could change it in an instant. The reason it's so hard to change and to get away is because you have made that man or woman an idol and they are the God of your life. And that's why you can't break away. You, you know what? Here's the problem with when people fornicate together, they get together and they, they sleep together, their hearts and their souls tie together. And like when you rip apart from somebody that you slept with, it's painful. It hurts. You'll cry for about two days, three days. But after you cry for about two, three days, three days, your the cloud will be gone. Your mind will be clear. And you'll be like, man, I was stupid. <laughs> it's, it's happened every single time. So if you're sacking up, if you're in the appearance of evil, Demons will take a, take advantage of that, and they will attack your life. I don't care what any of these theologians say. I know what I'm talking about. Been there, done it. You transgress, you you sin, you do all these things, it's going to happen. Iniquity is, is the sin of what? Does anybody know? Huh? No. Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. Iniquity is the sin of idolatry. Exactly. Is the sin of it's a, a, idolatry. So idolatry is a big, big issue. It's a bad issue. So these are some things uh, right there that will open up doors. Uh, let me think. What what else do we got? I think I've named a lot of stuff, um, but I know I haven't gotten it all. There's some things, like I said, I'm just, you know, no, you cannot spend the night. <laughs> I see that. It's, I got you. No. Um, Uh, what's another demonic portal? Oh, so when you go and you get items from people, like if you go to flea markets, if you go to, um, how garage sales and stuff, 
If you get items from places, guys, pray over those items, ask the Lord to sanctify them, and then bring them into your household. Don't just grab them and then bring them in your house. I literally have had things in my house. Things would be crazy. I'm like, what's going on here? And then the Lord will highlight and say, Daniel, you need to get rid of that thing or you need to pray over that thing, right? Sanctify it. Now, when it touches me, I believe it's sanctified because I have the Holy Spirit. But be you, what he's telling you to do, remember, it's about obedience. Sanctify the things that you're buying that are coming from people's household because I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> you don't know what that person's doing. You don't know what them items have been used for. You don't know who sat on that couch. Like, pray for it. Lord, we thank you for the for, for getting this. I just pray right now you sanctify this couch for your glory, and may it be used for the kingdom's sake. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with praying over something, guys. So just, just pray over the items if you go and you buy it at a garage sale or something. Just thank Jesus for them. Thank you, Jesus, for this item right here. Thank you, Jesus, for whatever. And if he gives you a big no on buying something, don't buy it because that means a witch <clears throat> may have prayed or a warlock may have prayed over something and is trying to give it to you so that they can have entry uh, in the realm of the spirit through their demons to attack you. You don't know people's intentions. I got a true story. I know a man of God who went to preach to Africa. A guy came up in the middle of the meeting where he was preaching, gave him a watch. He put the watch on his hand and immediately his face swole up big. His face went boof like that. He had, he had uh, sores that started from the bottom of his butt, started going all the way to the top of his head. You know, when he got delivered and got, uh, got healed, he took the watch off. And immediately he screamed out to G Jesus, repent it for having it, and his body went back to normal. And this is a Holy Ghost-filled Christian. Some of you guys know who he is. He has a testimony on. His name's Art Montgomery. But he put he's, he testifies of this, and it's crazy. Like, this is why we just can't take anything for anybody. <clears throat> Another thing that can open up demonic portals in your life is money. Yes, money. Where you, what you invest into knowingly, not not unknowingly and stuff like that. If you money is an investment and you get a return on your investment, even in the realm of the spirit, some people don't like teachings on that, but there is a return on investment. Whenever you put money, money is not evil. All right. The love of it is mammon is behind the love of money, but money in itself makes the kingdom go round, makes the world go round. All right. Money is not evil, but when you have a transfer of your money, it's an investment into something. That means you're investing, you're believing. Like a lot of you guys invest into this ministry. My hope and prayer when you guys do it is that you get a kingdom benefit, right? You get a kingdom benefit for what you're sowing into. If not, then why sow into it, right? Let's just be real. Why sow into something, one, that isn't really benefiting you? And number two, that's not benefiting the kingdom as a whole. That's not, you're not seeing souls saved. <clears throat> that's why I'm so adamant on giving you guys statistics of what we're doing showing you guys like things that are happening because I want you to see what your investment is bringing and it's bringing many souls into the kingdom of God. So <clears throat> if you invest into something, eventually you're going to get your souls too. You're going to get whatever God has for you because if you reap bountifully, you'll sow bountifully. If you reap sparingly, you'll, uh, you'll, sow, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly, right? But anyway, when there's a transference, for example, when people go to psychics and they give money for their psychic reading, that in that moment right there, there is a a a stealing, a, a thief. The spirit of the thief is coming to your life. Now you start to lose everything because you have blessed a thief. And the thief <clears throat> is stealing. Excuse me. Let me drink some water real quick. <clears throat> and the thief is stealing, right? So the psychic is a thief using a gift for gain. And then what happens is you get a spirit of thievery coming into your life. Now things are getting stolen from you everywhere. Now, now you're walking around, you lose your keys, you know, you're, you're forgetting things, you do all this stuff. And you're like, what is going on? Well, you went to a psychic who is a thief. Now you made an investment into that psychic. Now, um, there is a thief that you're now, now you have this thief thing going on in your life because you've invested into somebody who stole. You understand? So it's very important we, we, we know where we're putting our investment, where we know where we're putting our money. I'm, I'm led by the Holy Spirit to the best of my ability when I do anything with my finances. People in this ministry will tell you, I bless them. I, I help people out. I do a whole lot of things. But I give when the Lord has given me the green light uh, to give, okay? So it's very important that you put your resources in places that are kingdom, uh, kingdom builders and things like that. 
Uh, if you know in the past that you were a big investor in gambling, for example, gambling will cause that stealing thing to come on your life too because you're putting your money into something that has no positive outcome. Gambling has no positive outcome, guys. There's nothing positive in gambling. So when you give your money to gambling, you just keep losing it because that spirit, you'll notice that you'll get a big blessing. Notice people who have the gambling thing. They get a big blessing and then they have to give their money away again. And watch this. Once you've gambled, once you leave, you may not go back to that slot machine again, but you're going to gamble in other areas of your life and you're going to continue to see money be taken from you because you're a gambler. You're always gambling. You're always, now you're in this whole, nothing against crypto, okay? It has its pluses, but now you're gambling in crypto. You're gambling in this. You're gambling over here. You're gambling and you're just waiting and the money just keeps getting stolen over and over and over instead of you actually making proper investments that are going to benefit uh, the kingdom of God. Somebody's asking right now, can they play the lottery? All right, can they play the lottery? Ask yourself, why are you playing the lottery? To get rich quick. That's why people play the lottery. They want to gamble at the chance of getting rich quick. Again, cryptos, I'm not saying crypto's bad. So guys, don't beat me up for that. All right, I'm not saying that. I'm just, I'm just saying the gamble of it is what I'm talking about. All right. You can invest in crypto. But anyway, um, what was I just saying about the lottery? Yeah, if you if you if you give if you're doing the lottery, it's it's gambling to get rich quick. But for what means? Why is your soul wanting you to um, do the lottery thing? And yes, listen, I see what some people say. Some people say these bad organizations are doing good things like the lottery helps schools and stuff like that. I will tell you this, it's a bare minimum what they're giving out. Trust me. You if you really do research on organizations, you'll figure out where the money's really going. And it's going, it's a little bit is going to these these places. It just makes it's to make them look good. Look, the demon, demons do that stuff too. Look, even the Freemasons do charitable things. The Muslims do charitable things. The Buddhists do charitable things. But are you going to invest your money into that? You, you see what I'm saying? So all these people. Do do charitable things. Don't be fooled by the work by the charity that thing people are doing. The truth is, in this hour, um, with with Christians, okay, with Christians, is we need to support our brothers and sisters in Christ. Because I'm gonna tell you something: Muslims support Muslims, Buddhists support Buddhists. They invest, and they don't invest heavy into other areas. They want If we would support ourselves, meaning if we would support people in the kingdom way, way more kingdom businesses and stuff, we would actually see revival, right, more so because we're supporting our brothers and sisters in Christ, all right? So where you put your money is contractual. It's an agreement. So you need to make sure you're putting your money in places that are going to have a kingdom benefit, all right? So let's make sure we're putting our money in appropriate places. We're not just throwing our money wherever it needs to go. Always ask you, ask the Holy Spirit, okay? Always ask the Holy Spirit, where should I place my investment that's going to, that's going to push the kingdom of God? Am I saying you shouldn't eat at a restaurant? I'm not saying that. Am I saying that you can't go buy a cup of coffee somewhere? I'm not saying that. Am I saying don't go shop at this store or that store? I'm not saying that. It's not, it's not reasonable. It's not real, Okay. Not saying that at all. That's why I got to qualify these statements because I don't want people to get legalistic. Remember, I'm a grace guy, but I'm also a guy who understands how the demonic realm works and how Christians get called in ignorance a lot. What is the ultimate thing I'm trying to let you guys know today? I'm trying to let you guys know today you need to learn to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit for yourself so you can be properly obedient to what the Holy Spirit is telling you. That way, you will not fall into the wrong places. Remember, everything that's what is good for one person may not be good for another person. There's somebody can eat French fries, they'll be fine. There's another person they eat French fries, they're gone. You see what I'm saying? So, like, all things are permissible, not all things are good. There's always grace, okay? There are always grace. Grace, 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 grace. Okay? There's always grace. Now, if I'm saying something you don't agree with, if I've said something today you don't agree with, please take it to the Word. Please take it to Jesus Christ. He's the ultimate information person. I'm just giving you what I've heard from the Holy Spirit, what I believe Jesus is saying. I always tell you guys, be good Bereans. Take it to the Word. 
Don't let me be the absolute one-stop shop for being the teacher of the Word of God. I do not recommend that. I recommend hearing from me as I'm hearing from the Holy Spirit and then taking what I'm teaching you to the Word so that you won't be uh, confused or anything like that. I think everything I've said today, though, guys, is is enough to know that you can walk. It's okay to walk in holiness, period, purity, and righteousness. I think I've pushed you guys into holiness, righteousness, and purity. Right? I've pushed you into those places. So, if I've done that, then I've done my job. But if I've if I've okayed and justified the reason to go and sin and do stupid things, I have not done my job. All right. That means I've done something wrong and I don't want to be wrong. OK, I'd rather push you into righteousness, holiness and purity rather than push you into unrighteousness or to OK a sin that you're living in. I cannot OK sin. I cannot OK living together. I cannot OK the lottery. I cannot OK certain things. Now, I see some people are really upset about the lottery comment. Listen, take that up to the Holy Spirit, because the truth is you could start a business and make it a lot further than you will be playing the lottery. Believe in the gifts and things that the Lord has put in the inside of you. You have potential. You have talents. OK, I know that some of you are thinking, well, if I hit the lottery big, I can I can go and do amazing things. I want to tell you this. Then you better start studying, studying economics. You better start studying finances, because what happens is people go. I'm not done yet with that. I see some of you saying some things. What happens is people go, right? They win the lottery. They get three, four million dollars, five million dollars, and then they lose it like this because they'll start buying everything. They give money to their family members. They do all this stuff, and all of a sudden, the tax man comes, and the tax man takes 50%, 40% of what they made. And they're like, man, this ain't fair because you didn't study economics. You didn't understand how the world turns. You didn't understand that you need to go start a business now that you made $4 million so that you can place your money in a business. You got taxes that needs to pay. Oh, you're buying that property? Well, there's property taxes coming. Oh, you live in a state where there's state tax and there's federal tax? You better understand all this stuff, guys. But see, they know that. They know that. They know that people that don't have proper teaching will win the lottery and then they'll get all the money back anyway. They know that, man. They know this stuff, guys. So if you don't understand how economics work, if you don't understand how money moves, you will go poor even though you've become rich. I had people, I, I used to work in a prison, guys. I used to work three years in a prison. There was a man in there, his family. Listen, there was people, there was a man in there, his family won the lottery. It was a sad story. You know why? Because they got a lot of money. And now they ain't got the honey. You know what I'm saying? They bought boats. They bought all this stuff, not realizing there was a whole lot of stuff that was, you know, uh, tied behind that money. So, guys, don't don't be fooled. If you're going to it's better just to start a business for the kingdom. Allow the Lord to bless it and learn along the way. Amen. So. Yes, they waste it. It becomes wasted because your heart wasn't ready to handle the. You know, the Lord can send, I mean, the Lord can send you a lot of money and the devil can send you a lot of money. He can make you feel the, whoa, and then take it away just like that. Boom. Mike Tyson is a good example of that too. There's there's athletes that I know, I've talked to actual NFL athletes that have been rich and they have nothing now. Nothing. They're just has-beens. They once were something, now they have nothing. And they can't rely on their uh, physical talent anymore because they're old. You know, they don't have the same physical strength that they had when they were once young. Not everybody's Mike Tyson. Like Mike Tyson can still fight at 60 years old on young men. Not everybody can do that. Right. So anyway, be a good steward. The Bible tells us of things. You have to steward things. Well, guys, steward what God has given you well, and you will see the blessing of the Lord upon you. All right. I just gave you guys a little bit of economic understanding there. Okay. I have to know this stuff. You have to know this stuff. If you're going to run a business. If you're going to do anything, you have to understand how money moves. Amen. Um, by the grace of Jesus Christ. Uh, somebody asked me about music. Music is another way for demonic portals and atmospheres to be opened up into your life. Listen, I know this very well too. I went in a season of my life some years back. I said, you know what? I'm going to go I grew up listening to, uh, my dad would play country music to put me to sleep, right? I listened to hip hop, country. I used to listen to everything. So one day I say, I'm going to listen to the new country stuff that's out. <laughs> I kid you not. I start listening to these songs and like a lot of these country songs have a lot of rebellion and pride in them, you know, like I'm going to go find that girl, bring my dog, get on my tractor and everything. You know, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what the world is going on? So I start listening to this stuff. And I become prideful, man. I started, 
I started wearing tank tops, putting my shades on, looking half country again, riding my motorcycle. Next thing I know, I'm, I'm looking for a girlfriend, man. I'm telling you, this stuff is real. And I'm a whole married guy at the time. You know what I'm saying? Like this stuff started to infiltrate my ears and it started to infiltrate my spirit. And next thing I know, my whole life is going crazy. You see? Um, so, so yes, what you let into your ears will affect your spiritual, will affect the spiritual atmosphere and it will invite demons. Listen, some of the rap stuff you guys listen to with the beats, there's demonic beats that hit certain, hit certain tones and stuff that invite certain demons to come in. If you guys come from any, uh, some of you guys might be from, uh, Africa, from, uh, South America, from Latin America and stuff like that. You guys know what I'm talking to. There's a lot of drum beats and witchcraft and stuff like that, that invites demons into an atmosphere or conjures up stuff. They use that stuff to conjure up. Well, this some of these people that are in secular uh, rap, hip hop, stuff like that. Guess what, guys? Yeah, chants, stuff like that. Guess what they do? They do this because they it's it's witchcraft behind it because they know that they seduce the people and they know that the people will keep coming. So they add this stuff into their music. So it's very, 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 very important to guard your eye and ear gates. What you listen to matters, guys. Okay? What you listen to matters. So if you're sitting there, somebody said ASAP Rocky. You know, I can name a lot of names. Taylor Swift. There's a lot of stuff. I, watch this. So I'm at my daddy-daughter dance with my girls the other day. They start playing Soldier Boy up in it. Uh, and then they start I'm watching these girls, these little, and this is a Christian school. Like this is a private school. They're playing Soldier Boy, which I, I, I was, I was, a, I think I was, I forget what what grade I was. I, I might have been out of high school. I was out of high school, they, but anyway, they play that song. I'm listening to the girls super soak that. I, you know what they say after that, right? I'm looking. My daughters come up to me and like, Daddy, we're not doing this, and I'm like. You're in a whole Christian school playing this song and you're getting these girls to say this. I'm like, what are y'all doing? And then they put the Taylor Swift song on. Guys, guard your girls from that woman <laughs> until she gets saved. It is crazy how many, how many um Young girls are affected by this woman right now. And I pray this woman will get so convicted and repent of her demonic mess. These people, these young girls can sing the songs like it ain't nothing. And they sung it in unison. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is, this is horrible. This is what's happening to the uh, next generation. Parents, Christian parents, watch your kids. Don't allow it in your household. You are the owner and leader of your household under the Holy Spirit. Don't let your kids manipulate you. You tell them you will not tolerate that in your household because I'm telling you, I've watched it with my son back in the day. My son would listen to rap music and stuff, and I would see it in his character, and it started to affect my house. And I told him, I said, uh-uh. Even had Isaiah's have to get on him. I said, uh-uh, we don't do that here. For me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. So, boy, you live in my house. If you want to listen to that stuff, you go stand on the corner of the street and build your cardboard house. You ain't doing it. You ain't doing it in here. And these boys right here will tell you, these, these glory boys over here, they'll tell you I mean business when it comes to that. They've seen it. So that's the way you have to lead your household. We, we, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Don't let your children come in. Listen, that's another way demonic. Oof, the Lord is good. That's another way demonic atmospheres and portals Open up, guys, is your own children. Allowing your children to come in and run you will open up a demonic portal and atmosphere in your home. So if you allow your children to run you and then become the parents, then don't be crying when demons are in your house messing you up, okay? Because everything's upside down. It's not how it's supposed to be. Some of us are enabling our children. Look, some. listen, guys, I'm, this is going to hurt some feelings. I think I've hurt a lot of feelings today. If your children are addicted, if you continue to enable their addiction, don't go crying to the preacher to set them free. You need to you need to repent of your enablement, okay? You need to repent of your enablement. Some of the parents are enabling their children because you have this great mercy gift. You're enabling your children to continue to be an, a drug addict. It's your fault that they're a drug addict because of your enablement. You started feeding them that sugar. 
You kept giving them that sugar. Then they got on their little cigarettes. You let them smoke another cigarette. They asked you for $10. You kept giving them $10. You gave them $20. You kept giving them all this stuff. And now what's happened? They're full-blown drug addicts. And they're still coming asking you for money. And you keep giving them the money. Cut the source off. Yes, you're saying, well, what do I do if they go somewhere else? Well, either they're going to die by your hands or hopefully they'll come and get saved by God's hands. You see what I'm saying? So I know it hurts, parents. I know it's not good, but you're going to have to you're going to have to cut it off so that your children can be saved. Give them to the Lord. Don't enable them. I promise you, if you listen to me by the spirit, I'm prophesying to you. If you will go ahead and cut off your enablement, the Lord will start to intervene and he'll save your sons and daughters. I prophesy that somebody's somebody's son's coming back home because you're going to cut that off and repent. I prophesy somebody's daughter's coming back home because you're going to pro- you're going to you're going to cut that off and you're going to repent and you will see the promises and destiny that God has for your children. You will see it come come forth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. See, we have testimonies of people's moms and stuff that were doing this stuff and their their siblings actually died because of it. You know what I'm saying? So like I prophesy that your children will come back home and they will serve the Lord, but you got to cut cut it off. You see, this is why we tell the truth, because some of you don't even realize you're doing it. But you come across a broadcast like this and I speak to you and the truth that I tell you through the word of God, through the Holy Spirit will set you free. Okay, it'll set you free. This is also a prophetic stream, guys. It sets you free. The truth will set you free. In Jesus' name. So, yes, yeah, somebody was also asking me about listening to music that has uh, sexual connotations. I mean, yeah, guys, if you listen to that stuff, it's going to immorality is going to end up in your life. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I can name so many songs. <laughs> I can name songs from my times. You know, you like you're wondering why you're looking at people in a certain way and stuff because what you're letting into your ears. So, yes, music has a huge influence. Listen to stuff that's, that's glorifying Jesus Christ. Listen to listen. If you do listen to secular music. Listen to good stuff. Listen to the lyrics. The lyrics will tell on it, right? If the lyrics are, are, it can be yielded towards the heart of God. Not all secular music is bad, okay? Not all secular music is bad, but you know when something's bad. Your spirit cringes. You start to feel the wrong emotions about things. I mean, it's really not hard to understand, amen? So that will open up demonic portals. Another thing that will open up demonic atmospheres and portals is your words. So that what you say, if you say, if you say something that is bad, for example, if you say, oh, I want, I'm, I'm not going to live a long time. Or you say, oh, I really, I'm re- I can never do good at a job. I can't this, I can't that. If you start speaking that, well, we break that you're not going to live a long time. You'll live a long time. You're going to do great at the job, right? So you have to come through and you have to prophesy truth to them to break the curse off of them that they brought up on themselves. Remember, <clears throat> a curse without a cause has no landing place, like a bird that is in the air looking for a place to light or land. So, if you if you use your words and you say something dumb, you're going to get a dumb result. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you say stupid things, you're going to get stupid results. If you say if you say, you know, if you put a death sentence on yourself, you're going you got now all this death is following you. If you if you talk lustful towards women, all this lust is following you. Towards men, all this lust is following you. Girl, did you see his chest? My goodness, I could eat that up like a blah blah blah. Now next, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now next thing you know, you got chest man coming after you, you know? And are you looking at a girl, boy, you see that da 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 da. Next thing you know is da 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 right around you. You know, you get what I mean? Now next next thing you know, you done fell into some crazy stuff. So, I mean, if you if you talk that way, you get it. <laughs> I'm just I'm I'm being nice, guys. I'm keeping it like I'm trying to stay at least PG. You know, I don't want to talk too crazy. I could say some stuff off live that would that we could really understand what I'm saying. But if you got eyes to see and ears to hear, you'll know what I'm saying. Amen. <laughs> so it, what you say, yes, for as a man thinketh in his heart, Proverbs 23, 7, so is he. So it, what you say is what you get. All right. Speak life, get life. Speak death, get death. You want a demonic atmosphere? Keep speaking dumb. Keep speaking death. If you if you want to see life and life more abundantly, Speak life, and you'll see life all around you. Amen? Amen. Another thing. Man, I got more things. I'm going to say this, and then we're going to move on, but because it's, it's, it, we're getting deep into this, and I want to be able to pray for some people. Um, another thing that will cause you to be under a demonic atmosphere is being under a controlling, manipulative church. Being under that kind of stuff will bring control and manipulation into your life and into areas of your life 
So it's very important that you aren't under negative, oppressive, tied down demonic leaders because that stuff will hold you down. All right. It will hold you down. So it's very important that and if you always leave on a good note if possible, okay. I got a thing on how to leave churches. All right. If you can leave good, leave good. But if you're under that type of leadership, it'll enter into your home. There is if you hear pastors preaching, you listen, especially if you're ladies. If you hear um, pre- preachers preach stuff like this, you listen to me. I'm 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 the bigger voice than your husband in your household. There is preachers who actually say that they have a greater voice than your husband. Get out of that church. That is is what you call a demonic cultic mindset. All right. No preacher is greater than your husband, woman of God. Okay. No woman preacher is greater than your wife. You understand? There's some preachers that keep trying to get into people's homes. And I tell people all the time, I'm not here. If you ask for my advice, I'll give it to you. But I tell women, hey, that's your husband. You listen to him. Ultimately, you listen to him. If y'all want to advice together, then I will give you advice together. But if I listen, ladies, what some ladies will do is they'll, they'll try to make the they'll talk about the preacher all the time. And it's just d- castrating the husband constantly. That's a spirit. That's a that's a whole Jezebelic messed up spirit that's coming into you guys life. You see. So. When you're allowing when you when you're a part of a, a congregation or a leadership and they're they're in your marriage like they're they you're really now you're married to the preacher you're really not married to your husband now because the preacher has usurped the authority of your husband. You see what I'm saying? So let's let's make sure that that we have leaders that will tell us that the household is the household, the church is the church. Your house, your house will line up with the church if your house is built on Jesus Christ. Amen. There's nothing wrong with getting advice from pastors, getting pastoral counsel and stuff like that. I'm talking about when you hear pastors say stuff like, you listen to me, you don't listen to your husband. Nah, you say, nah, suck. I don't care how big you think in the kingdom. You, you, we don't rock that way. So you make sure that, you know, you guys, you, you guys know that. All right, guys, it's not hard to hear a snake, see a snake, smell a snake. OK, you, you just got to you got to know if you see that, get up, get away from it. All right. We don't we don't want to have these these preachers that are trying to mess up homes because they feel like they need to have absolute authority. It doesn't work that way. Amen. Jesus has the ultimate authority. Hallelujah. So anyway, these are some things, guys. There's many other things I could talk about, but these are some some main things. Maybe I'll do a part two on this later on or something, but these are demonic portals, things that open up demonic atmospheres. Now, how do we get rid of all this? I've told you all this stuff. How do you get rid of it? Repent. Turn from it. Renounce. Get rid of whatever you need to get rid of. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Be obedient. Romans 8 tells us that the sons and daughters are led by the Spirit, and the Spirit will lead them to all truth. Listen to the Holy Spirit, and you cannot go wrong. That's right. Replace the lie with truth. If you believe in a lie, get into the Word. It'll give you the truth. Ask people that are filled with the Holy Spirit to give you advice. They'll tell you the truth from the Bible. A true woman, a man of God, will always lead you back to Jesus. Amen. Which will point you to all truth that will truly set you free and cause you to walk in victory and let you change history. Amen. 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 That's what we do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you guys. We got over a lot of viewers on here today. So let's go ahead and keep hitting that like button, guys. Keep sharing. I'm about to give a chance right now for um yeah for a lot of you guys to be able to uh, an opportunity to give i'm not going to go down today and uh, break down every prayer request but do me a favor as you guys give today okay please put in there things you need breakthrough for um put in there if you have children that you need to be saved put in there if you need breakthrough in some area uh if you if you know just attach something to what you're giving now we, we, this, I'm not, I, if you don't want to give, don't give. All right. Cause I know there's a lot of preachers out there that are trying to manipulate people out of their pockets. I would tell you to give because of what we're doing in the kingdom. I do need you to give. I do. Why? Because we need souls to be saved. We have revival events. We're doing uh, charitable things. There's a lot of stuff we got going on. We're starting a headquarters. So yes, I do want you to give, but I want you to give from what the Lord has put on your heart. Amen. But I'm telling you also, Put a prayer attachment to your giving so that we as a ministry can go back and look at your notes and what you're sending and we can pray over your giving. Amen. So when you give these apps, give chances to put in things or attach things to it. 
do it so that we can actually put our hands over it, pray over every prayer request, and ask the Lord Jesus by his grace and mercy to answer the things that you are uh, looking to be answered, all right? If not, you can always, if you don't want to give and the Lord ain't telling you to, then don't. But I would recommend you do because you will be blessed, never stressed, always impressed because the Holy Ghost always has the best. Amen. <laughs> all right. Anyway, let me stop rhyming. Uh, I got to keep rhyming. I can't stop. Anyway, guys, he's going to put up the uh, he's going to put up the giving screen and I'll be right back. God bless you. Awesome. Awesome. Guys, once again, thank you guys for your giving. I see your super chats and stuff like that. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll go back and look at all the other stuff and uh, we will um, be praying over that. But I want to pray for these guys here. Only reason I'm having to go on because we got, like I said, I got some other stuff I got to get to. But the four runners that are on here, I have a Zoom Zoom call right here, guys, that you can't see. If you want to be a part of the Zoom, you can go to supernaturallife.org and become a partner. That's another way you can give. Just partner with us. Uh, monthly, you can get into a hub, you can get into discipleship, and we will help continue to grow you in the things of Jesus. Amen. And it doesn't matter where you're at in the world. We got people all over the world. And I, as you know, I travel to all the nations. So anyway, all right. So um, let's go ahead, bring over the Zoom and let's talk to some folks and let's see what's going on. Oh, well, I can't, I can't hear nobody without, without some uh, phones in, that's for sure. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. Pick uh, pick Jasmine Gahan, Gahan. I think that's how I might be butchering your name. I'm sorry. You got a spotlight, me too, bud. Thank you. All right, I think we're good. She needs to unmute. Ah, uh, there you are. How are you, my friend? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Where are you from? Um, I'm in Washington right now. Ah. I come in Washington. Okay, Washington. Awesome. So, how how can I pray for you today? Um, I really just want prayer for my um brother, um, and just for me, and my family. That's that's about it. I actually saw you, me and my husband saw you in um, Garden uh, Eden yeah, yeah. in March. Do you remember me? No, huh? Hmm. Hold on. Give me a second. No. It has to, it has to all come back. What What happened? Tell me. Um. So you were doing like a mass prayer huh? Um. and you had said something about like um, sickness with Jezebel. I don't know. And then I started to. Uh, manifest and then you told me to come here mm 
Mm. And you touched me, you touched me, but um, nothing really happened. But um, the Lord, me and the Lord are really close. So like, so you, um, you were, manif you were manifesting. Yeah. Um, I think like there's been stuff deep down in my stomach for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Um, but the Lord, like I said, me and the Lord are close. So I think he's just been revealing things to me. Um, that night when you left, I got prayed for by, um, Sister Shereen and Brother Scott. Do you know them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They're my spiritual, they're my spiritual parents. So really, um, yeah. Come, yeah. Yes. Um, God and, uh, Shereen are awesome people, man. Yeah, they are. Um, My hub leader. They prayed over me, um, and it was revealed that there was rejection there too. So, um, you know, it's been good. It's been good. So, okay. So how? You and I knew I, some. Sorry, I was say some told me not to hang up the call today because I'm at work right now, and um, but I had the nagging like, don't don't leave the call. Yeah. Don't leave. And so, yeah. <laughs> So, so you want me just to pray only for your son and your husband? I just, did I say my son? I didn't say my son. How do you know I got a son? Guys, help me. Did she say her son? Uh, huh? No, my, I said my brother, my brother and my family. Just be my family. Ah, you have a son? I do have a son. Does he need prayer? You can pray for him, yeah. What does he need prayer for? Um... He's 19 months right now, and we've just really been praying for him to talk. Like, he's trying to form words, but he hasn't really, um, you know, he has, he's supposed to have, like, a certain amount of vocabulary around this age, and he doesn't. So um, we're just praying over that. And the doctors said that he has, like, low iron, but we're not claiming it. Mm -hmm. um, so we just... We just pray over him every night and try to pray over him every night. He's my baby. So, and my husband's on the call too. His name is Dakota Braswell. Ah, Dakota, God bless you. We're going to come into agreement for your son and your brother. And who else? Just me and my husband, my marriage. Okay. Good. Well, I, I believe that the Lord said located your son for a reason, and I believe your son will talk. Let me pray. What's his name? Amari. Father, I thank you for Amari. By the power and authority of Jesus Christ, I prophesy that your son within, I, it's, I really feel this, and I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it by faith. I believe in a matter of weeks, like three, I'm going to say three to four, just to give myself some grace, three to four weeks, you will start to see a significant change in your son. And as you see this change, I feel like the Holy Spirit has wanted me to tell you to make sure that it is a testimony that's going to glorify him. Now, what do I mean? It's in your hands as his mother and his father. I'm talking to you too, Dakota, to testify of how the Lord Jesus Christ through prayer had touched your son and has allowed your son to receive the breakthrough that he needs. So as I also pray, I, I see things being wiped from your son. I saw the remnants of, of pain from the yesterdays that was, was on you had, had almost like, it's like ash had almost fell down. And remember, I heard the verse, beauty from ashes. So the ashes, the attacks, the struggles, the things, the pains that you even went through, maybe when pregnancy was happening and stuff like that, all of that is being removed from your son as I speak. And the Lord is blessing your son, and your son is going to be a mighty warrior for the kingdom of God. He's going to triumph over the ways of the enemy in so many different ways. Your son will be normal. Your son will be able to move forward, and he will be a living, breathing testimony of the goodness of God in Jesus' mighty name. And I also pray for your marriage. I pray that this marriage will be an example of the light of Christ to many. I think I believe that y'all's testimony, the testimony that you guys carry together will be a testimony that will bring breakthrough to many couples. That will bring uh, breakthrough to people that are starting even early in, in, in marriage and stuff. I believe those types of people will be sent to you guys. People that are struggling even in their pregnancies. I believe that you guys will bring breakthrough to these type of people mm -hmm. so that they can go from glory to glory and faith to faith. And um, I, I'm feeling this too. I, I, now I know that you said you were manifesting. Was there female figures in your life that were very oppressive talking down to you at one time? Like you're really pressed, yeah. very pressed down. Um, that's like my whole life, pretty much. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, was that? Was, does that include your mother and other authoritative figures like that? 
um, my mom, and there was, um, I have a godmother. She was appointed to me when I was like seven years old. Mm. Um, she's also a, an apostle. Um, but when I had, it's, it, there's a lot, there's a lot to the story. Um, uh, but I haven't been in Washington my whole life. I actually grew up here one to 13. And then we left to Arkansas. We left to Colorado and, um, California. Then I, I just came back with my son, um, it, my son was a newborn when I moved here alone pretty much in um, December 2022. Mm-hmm. And we I rekindled with my godmom. I believe that the Lord took me apart from her. Um, I don't see her as much anymore because um, I, I thought she would like influence me spiritually. But I think the Lord was trying to reveal like what really goes on mm-hmm. um, with her. Um, I don't know. It's just there's just a lot. And then my sister's godmother, we lived with my sister's godmother when I was a teenager, when I was a preteen. Um, I was, I think there's something there with her because um, she, uh, I remember she would really talk down on me when I was a little girl and, um, you know, just make me feel really insecure about myself. Uh, but like, I, that's a, that's a tough question because I, I mean, it's, I, I get I, I get it. I just, it shows me that I was, re, I, was, I was, I was catching in the spirit what was going on. So l- let me, let me pray this off of you. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Lord Jesus, you love this woman. I pray right now, every oppressive word that was spoken over you by authority figures, not being able to measure up the even jealousy and insecurities that were being poured down onto you. I command all of those words, all of the effects of that uh, control, manipulation, that stuff that was pressing you down, I command it to be broken from your life now. And if there be any demonic influence that had come into her from that, I command you to come up and to come out of her life and to release her once and for all. I'm seeing by the Spirit your ears are being loosed from words that had come in, that had penetrated. I command those words that entered into her soul to exit now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And I pray right now, Lord Jesus Christ, that she will rise up as a leader and a voice, like I said, to many women, and she will fulfill the call and destiny that God has put on her life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And your brother, let me hit your brother real quick. What was it for your brother? Um, he's my older brother. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he's been an alcoholic for, um, I want to say more than three years. He's staying with us right now. Um, he's been staying with me and my husband for about maybe almost two months, but he originally lives in Spokane with his, um, baby's mother. I have, he has, a, um, two daughters. One is biologically his, the other is not biologically his. And then he has a son. Um, those are my babies, but they're not, they're not getting raised and, um, they don't, they don't know what church is. They don't know who God is. So, um, my brother's really on my heart sure. and he's living with us now. And I don't, I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want God to just work on him. I don't, I don't want to push myself onto him. I don't want, you know, so, but I believe that God put him in my house for a reason. Yeah. And so well, you look, just need to pray for that. Yeah. We'll pray that you have the grace for this addiction to be broken from his life. So, Father, I pray right now for her brother. You can tell that it's a struggle on her heart. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every spirit of addiction, every spirit of torment, every spirit of witchcraft that's come against her brother, any familial things that's followed down, I break its power now. And, Father, I pray your grace to come up on her brother now, sustain him, Free him and allow him to walk into victory and to have his eyes totally set on you because you are his sustainment in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you. Of course, my friend, may you have a wonderful rest of the day at work. And um, I hope that you and Scott and them, Shireen, are staying in contact. Thank you. God bless you, brother. Yeah, God bless you, too. Send send love to the husband. I know he's on here, but God bless him, too. (laughs) Amen. 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 Don't you love it? Let's go with Megan Roman. Oh, she did. Oh, there it is. Up there. Up, 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 up. There she is. Hello, Megan. How are you? Hello again. Yeah. 
I, I felt, I, I don't know, I felt drawn to, to pray for you today. What's going on? Um, well, since we talked the other day and my connection got lost, yeah. I had like some attacks at work and I had to try to get them out and I, it was very violent. And, um, yesterday I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I was attacked yesterday, like several times and it wore me out and just getting on this call. I feel like something is just like lingering there, just like taking over me. I mean, I, I don't know how to shake it. Yeah. What do you, what, what do you think it's attached to so that I can pray into it? I don't know. Something, something on this call. I don't know. It just like triggered as soon as I like got on this call. Mm. Like, I, I don't know. Let me pray. You ever, you've been through deliverance before? I mean, other than like the other day, yesterday and the other day, not really, oh, no. New, huh? Look, mm -hmm. let me, mm -hmm. Okay, look at me. I command right now, whatever spirit is oppressing her, reveal yourself. Uh, come on. In the mighty name of Jesus, yes. Reveal yourself. Now, I want to know how you came into her life. How did you access her life? Huh? I can see that you're there. What's the access point to her life? Mm. I want you to listen to any thought that comes to your head. You hear me? Them things will speak through thoughts sometimes. Reveal to her how you come into her life. In Jesus' name. Megan, you can hear me, right? Okay. Is there anything you're hearing in your spirit when I ask that question? <laughs> no. No, no. Were you were you did you undergo a lot of abuse in your life? Here and there, yeah. In relationships? Yeah. Okay. I command every spirit that's trying to shut her mouth, not allow her to speak, every spirit of trauma, every spirit of abuse. Every spirit of man pleasing. Make yourself, yeah, make your way out of her body. Come on. Come on, you serpent. Come out of her body. Everything in the depths of her stomach. You unclean spirit. I command Holy Ghost fire up on her head now. Burn. Yeah. Every demonic seducing spirit. Make yourself, make your way out of her now. Uh huh. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yep. We break mind control also in Jesus' name. Every, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And control. All of it. Mighty name. Right. Yeah. Okay. Coming. All Every spirit of rejection. Leave her. Uh huh. Everything that's trying to make her leave early of this earth, you come out of her too. In Jesus' name, she will fulfill her assignment. Any demonic attachments, known and unknown, I sever her from them now. In Jesus' name. Oh. Yeah. And also any illegal attachment, any marriage in the spirit. Today, I divorce you from her life. Yes. Before the Lord Jesus Christ, she is married to Jesus. She is not married to anything else in the spirit. Come out of her body. Up and out. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes. And Lord, I pray you heal every area of trauma. Holy Spirit, enter into every door, every place of her soul that is traumatized. I command right now complete healing in your soul. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh. 
<laughs> you hear me, Megan? Okay. Yeah. What do what are you what are you experiencing now? What are you feeling? Are you feeling a lightning like you're lightening up? Are you feeling that happen? Yes, my bunch of tingling everywhere. Perfect, perfectamente. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the power of the Holy Ghost. That's the what you feel them tingles. That's the anointing of the Holy. Mm -hmm. Ghost. The anointing breaks the yoke. That means Jesus is delivering you right now completely. Also, I want to pray this: every heavy burden that you've been carrying unnecessarily, <sighs> any mistakes from the past, any failure mindsets where you feel like you failed in areas. I command right now all of that to come off of your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now come up and out of her. Come on. Come on. Nothing's going to hang on. Everything's got to go. go. Uh-huh. Yeah. All, come on. Come on. Go ahead and leave her body in the mighty name of Jesus. Exit her body. Now, now, there's one other thing that keeps hitting me, and I got to ask you about this. I'm going to ask you in kind of like code so I don't like throw it all out there, all right? When you were when you were young, I'm going to go back into your younger years. Did you have some traumatic things in your younger years? Okay, were you ever, yeah. were you ever forced into things you shouldn't have been forced into? Yeah. Okay. Meaning that, you know, not the nicest things. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. Have you forgiven anybody that that's been associated with? I buried it so deep I didn't know it was there. Exactly. I saw you. I saw it coming back to remembrance when I was talking to you. Because some of this stuff, it's some of the manifestation is, is showing me some of that, right? <laughs> so so can you can you forgive now, you don't have to verbalize the name God's grace is here just because we're on a live call and I just don't want that to go out across the world. I want to keep that in mind. Can you verbalize forgiveness for the forgiveness for the person harming you? Can you say, Jesus? Jesus. I forgive the person that harmed me. I forgive the person that harmed me. That took advantage of me. That took advantage of me. I ask you, Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to set me free. To set me free from every immoral spirit. From every immoral spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right, you heard her. I right now sever her tie to whoever did anything wrong to her. If it was family, friends, whatever it may be, come out of her body. Uh huh. Come out of her body. You unclean spirit, exit her body. Yeah, come out the deep pit of her stomach now. I know you're deep down there. I want you to come all the way out of there. You came in as a breath, you leave as a breath. Your assignment is broken. I know you're in the depths of her belly. You come all the way out. Come on. Come on. All the way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every trauma of what happened to her when she was young, I command those walls to come down. And I ask you right now, Holy Spirit, to go behind those walls and remove any demonic thing that has been hiding behind them. Now, come on out from behind there in Jesus name and leave her body. Everything. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Come on. Come on. Yes. Come on out. You've been sh you've been spotlighted. You have to go. You've already been seen. She forgave. Jesus Christ is her Lord and Savior. No, no spirit can stay there. Come on out of her body. Yeah. yeah. You entered as a breath, you leave as a breath. It's over. She's going to be restored. Come out of her body. Just give it a second. You'll feel the release from that. In Jesus' name. I'm looking for the exit. Mighty name of Jesus. Mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And every family attachment I break to anything that's been following on the mother or father's side, I break that. 
Yeah, the familiar spirits. We break its power. You will not walk in the footsteps of your generations in the wrong way. You will be the generation changer. Now, I'm going to prophesy life. I prophesy in the mighty name of Jesus that you will be a woman who brings many people freedom. You will be a woman who delivers many for the glory of Jesus Christ. You will not be dictated by your past. You will not be dictated by the things that have happened to you. Your life is becoming a testimony. The Lord is setting you free as a testimony. Goodness, you will go and you will testify of even today how the Lord is setting you free. She will come, she will, yes, she will come among many. She will testify of what for her to free. She will set many people free. Families will be restored. Be built that were broken once before. She will be a person of reconciliation. I prophesy you as a reconciler. In the life of now every spirit that is contrary to what I have said, make your way out of her body. Live in her. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. My Jesus. There it comes. Yeah. There we go. Hallelujah. Ah, come on, Jesus. All of it. You good? Cough anything out. If you feel that, if you feel it in your chest, in your stomach, just keep coughing that out. Don't let it. They're coming. Yeah, they're coming out, so let them go. Yeah. All the rest of you, stop holding on. Then come out. Come all the way out. Mighty name, Jesus. Yeah. This is good. This is good. Celebrate inside. Don't don't look at the pain. Celebrate what Jesus is doing. Celebrate. Be thankful internally, and the stuff continues to leave. Thankfulness is the enemy of defeat. I'm telling you. Thankfulness is the enemy of defeat. Yeah, there's a few of these things. A little bit of a dark kingdom has been hanging out. Hold on. <laughs> now I want to. I want to see. I want to see if this one right here, if, if 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 it'll speak. Just listen. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, you come through trauma. Yes or no? Uh huh. Are you a spirit from when she was young? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You haven't allowed her to grow up into who she's supposed to be. Mm -mm. And your goal is to destroy her and to disable her mentally. I know that's what you're here to do. So, then you witchcraft spirit from her youth. Make your way out of her body. You will not manipulate her and control her anymore. Go ahead and come out of her. And I know you come through the family. You're trying to continue what was done in the family. You want to continue. <laughs> The power and authority has came through Jesus Christ, vessel, and it's telling you today, your assignment in her life is done. The, the demonic assignments over Megan's life has come to an end. Today, she will prosper after today. She will no longer be held down. She will no longer be burdened by these spirits anymore. It's completely done in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So I pray Holy Ghost fire completely upon her. Holy Spirit, fill the vessel. Press everything out in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Do you speak in tongues yet, Megan? Do you know what that is? Then say yeah. this. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For filling me with your Holy Spirit. For filling me with your Holy Spirit. I ask you also. I ask you also. To give me my prayer language. To give me my prayer language. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right. Now I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for Megan. Lord Jesus, you heard her prayer. I pray right now you fill her with the Holy Ghost and fire. Now be filled with the Holy Spirit and receive 
your prayer language. Y lavasando evretia, brosonde levande, bretiando evrasetando. Now, now you got to you 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 have to speak now. Okay, I'm gonna be praying. I want you to let the language start to flow. Remember, it's not from here; it's from here. Okay, and this is going to change everything tremendously. Amen. All right, I will start praying. You're not going to sound exactly like me. Just get it rolling, okay? All right, Father, I thank you for Megan. X 238 says uh, to, to baptize people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You're baptized in Jesus' name, right? In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You've been baptized in water, right? Then you got to get. I believe so. All right, well, if not, we'll do it. We'll get you done later, all right? We'll figure that out. But you're getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. You can do it backwards. I'm just saying. I just was wondering if you've been baptized before. So anyway, we're going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. Okay? Okay. All right. You've seen people speak in tongues, right? Mm -hmm. Receive this gift. Mm -hmm. All right? Father, I thank you for Megan. I pray right now. Fill her with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Irosandande vrasitiande. Every bit of guilt, shame, and condemnation that has kept her from receiving from the things of the Father, from receiving from the things of God, I command it to be broken from her now. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, encourage you that you have a good Father. He's a good Father. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will never walk away from you. He will always be there to sustain you and comfort you. And today he wants to give you a precious gift that you can use every day. He doesn't do his daughters wrong. He doesn't take from his daughters. Amen. So right now, Father, I thank you for her life. I pray right now you fill her completely in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Just start praying. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray, girl. Actually, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you will be filled with power. If people are watching this, you haven't received your prayer language, receive it now. Join in with me. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Now, Megan, Megan, look at me. Look at me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at me. I want you to take a deep breath. I want you to receive peace. Take another deep breath. Sense of peace. Receive peace. Yeah. Receive peace. Yeah, receive peace. Yeah, receive peace. Receive rest. Receive grace. Take it easy on yourself. Now, now listen. What state are you in? New York, but I'm from Georgia. Okay, you're in New York right now. Okay, so here's what, I'm, Maria, there's some, uh, there's some deep-rooted healing stuff I want to deal with that we'd have to do off, off of here that we need to talk about, you know. Um, I want to get somebody to talk with you. I want to work through some, some more stuff verbally because I believe there's some stuff we probably don't need to verbalize completely right here online, okay. So I want to talk through, help, I want to get somebody to help talk through some stuff, amen, so we can get some more, get some more healing to come to you, amen. 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 So I will be uh, in touch here in a little while. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, say thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. He's he's working it out all for his good, my friend. Amen. 
Amen. People at my work, I hope, hopefully they didn't hear me. They probably thought something weird was, well, something supernatural was definitely going on. But, Amen. Just put, oh. just put your hands on them and get them free too. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> That's called losing dignity, right? Oh, my goodness. I was looking for it. Let me see. Go back. Go back. No, no, no. Uh, go back one time. I'm one. Hold on. There she is. I want to speak to one. I want to speak to Lakeith. Uh, right. I'm going to do one more here online and then we'll forerunners. Y'all stay on. If you guys want to be on the Zoom call, guys, I'm going to go offline after this one right here. Um, you guys can join at going www.thesupernaturallife.org. Right there, Lakeitha. There she is. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How you doing, Mike? I'm shocked. Oh my God. Hi, Daniel. I met you through Prophet Lomi. Good. God bless you and honor and grace and mercy to you ah, and your family. Amen. Oh my God. I'm shocked. <laughs> I saw you. I saw you in agreement. I saw you coming into agreement on the call. I said, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah." You were. So oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hey. Thank you for locating, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So, so is there anything specific you want me to pray into today? Definitely pray for healing. Um, I'm having trouble with us. Uh, uh, saying what it, the heal it is, but it's for me and both of my husband. Um, I pray that God reveals it to you. I think. Um, second, I think I got you. Uh huh. And also, I pray for His salvation, um, my household salvation, myself with spiritual. I've been having spiritual encounters and the understanding of the uh, presence of uh, angels manifested mm -hmm. because I'm asking the Lord, what does it mean? Sometimes when I talk to people, I can see virtues like uh, the angels of light around people. And I want to be able to operate and function in my calling and um, financial increase so that I can do what I got to do for the Lord. Amen. I probably got a lot more, but y'all know when you get in the prison of man of God, it's just, <laughs> like, ah! nah, it's okay. It's only by his grace. Um, yes. Thank uh, you, Jesus. So, you don't want me to verbalize, but I, I think I understand what it is you're asking for healing from. <clears throat> yeah. But I you said you said it the Lord shows me, but you don't want me to say it out loud. If if God no, I'm I'm humble enough. If God says if you say it out loud, it's fine. Um, but I've shared it, I know at one point I've shared it with too many people mm -hmm. and um I was just so devastated and um You need you need healing um, you, you both need healing from the same thing, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Let me let me ask you this because I, I, I got an idea what you're talking about. Is it mm -hmm. it's not life threatening though, right? No. Yes, you're right. Okay. Right. Oh. right. No, it's not. So we can ask the Lord to heal both of you in that area. Right. But he needs the Holy Spirit. And I feel like the reason why it's able to because we're married and the reason why it's able to function is because he's not fully uh saved. Is he is he living a moral lifestyle just with you? He's, um, he's not now. He, God's delivering him a lot. He's not. He was uh, suffering from alcoholism. Uh -huh. God delivered him from that after we went to um, Prophet Lovi and Prophet Lovi prayed over us. Okay. Um, God delivered him from that, and just through prayers, he he's just done a one eighty in his life. So, um, glory be to God. I'm grateful for the change that he's uh, taking place in his life, but. Um, he has this thing where he watches scary movies a lot. He has a lot of tra childhood trauma that he deals with. And I believe he's also, uh, like, he, I don't know how to, I think that um, I, I'm the only one he has besides the Lord. He's not mm. close with his family. They've been a family that's split apart. So he kind of leans on me a lot and it's frustrating to me sure. because, like, I want him to learn to go to God because I know that he's my covering and I don't want to wear the pants. I'm good. <laughs> like he can, I want him to wear the pants and him to lead. I'm good on Perfect. that, you know, so I want him to be in his place spiritually and also uh, mentally to be able to cover us as a family. Cause you know, with, even with the kids, we have five. And so I want him to be the ultimate umbrella and I'm going to help him hold that umbrella, but I just need you to open up first. Watch. Cause it's raining on us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, <laughs> let me let me prophesy something to you real quick. 
I, what I felt like I heard from the Spirit of the Lord. 2025. January 20, 2025. You mark from this, you work from this, you mark this day, okay? Mark this day. On the month of January 2025. The man, the man that you see now will not be the man that you know now. What do I mean? You're praying for the encounter with the Holy Spirit upon his life, right? When you look at oh my him, God, he just takes. Thank you, Jesus. When you talk, when you, you see, when you see this man, January 2025, you will see a man that is filled with the Holy Ghost. And also, this look, I want to, I want to tell you something. I know that you want him to be the hit and he will be. There is a strong, there's a strong ministry that is upon your life. There's a reason yes. you're so yielded to the prophetic and you have such a seer ability, right? There's a strong yes. ministry. He is a supplement to what God has <clears throat> put on your life. So he's going to lead as the man, but he's also a supplement to the, to the, to the gift that has been placed wow. upon your life. Okay. That is why he, yes. and that's, there's a, there's a, there's a, what has happened is there's been a perversion of way things are supposed to be, right? He leans on you heavy yes. in the wrong way right now. Okay. Yes. But, but eventually he's going to be a support to the vision and the call that the Lord has put on your life, which is a call for both of you together. It's a prophetic ministry. It's a ministry that will bring a lot of healing. I see a lot of healing upon yes. your, upon your life. You have a strong, strong yes. healing gift where you will also yes. have a mothering nature on your life too, where you'll be able to mother you, very Jesus. well and be able to help really well. And I'm not, yes. I know many people yes. might not see this cause you got a little humility there, but I also see a straight edge, which means I see you can be very straight edge with people, meaning you can tell them black yes. and white, like it needs to be when it's time, you know, um, yes. Which, yes. Also, yes. which also comes with the prophetic gifting. But the biggest thing I want to tell you in this is January, 2025. And I'm, and I'm seeing, I'm also starting to fill a day. I'm seeing, I'm, I saw that month. Now I don't know if this month means anything to you. I saw January 15th, 2025. So I believe there's a significance to this date concerning your husband and concerning, uh, the thing you have been praying for. And now, now look, yes, when, I, when I'm putting, when I'm putting down a hard number like that, write it down because there's going to be something significant right. to this date that's going to be very, very strong and powerful that you're going to come back with a very strong testimony concerning your husband. Okay. Yes, so, so the prayer will be answered because the fervent and righteous prayer, the fervent prayers of a righteous one like yourself availeth much. And because you're a righteous before the Lord, he's going to answer your prayers in the way that you want them to be answered. Okay. Because it's, for the, because it's for the kingdom's sake. Now, also, I want you to put your hand on your stomach and I want to pray something. Father, I thank you for this woman of God. This is for you and your husband. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command any demonic attack of sickness, of disease, of infirmity that has come against her, that has come against that man. Today, we break every demonic power and every demonic assignment that has come against them. Healing is their portion. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, man. I appreciate you a lot. I was not expecting that, but thank God. Yeah. <laughs> thank God. Thank God for your ministry. I mean, God is faithful. And, you know, I, I, I usually won't drop such exact dates like that unless I really feel a strong inclination because I got to hold up to that. All right. So you're going to be visiting me next year and you're going to be telling me something. You know what I'm saying? I already know. <laughs> I already know. I received. Amen. As a matter of fact, I received. received. Come on, <laughs> but I want to give you a testimony, too. As we were talking, he texted me. One of the angels of the Lord mm -hmm. came to me and gave me a name. Uh, his na his name and he told me don't forget but in the dream I couldn't my myself couldn't remember the dream but my spirit remembered I mean the name but my spirit remembered the dream so as it came back to me um I remembered to text it to my mom so I can write it down he just called me and told me that he had the same encounter in the the angel told him to remember the name and write it down. And he call, he just texts me the name of the angel that encountered him. So I know that that, that was confirmation that he, uh -huh. I'm 
I wrote it down. I know that it's going to happen. And I believe God and I thank God because I really want it. And I want to be a blessing to other people bad. I don't, I want to be someone that gives solutions and not just say cliche after cliche, you know, Man. I really want to, and I want that for my husband. You got a good, your spirit is good. I like your spirit. You have a, uh, <laughs> you have a tenacious God. spirit. It's a good. And the Lord, the Lord, Praise the God. Lord will, the Lord will honor that. And now listen, with the date that I gave you, it's a process date. So that means from even today up to that date, it's a process date. And that is a date of completion on something that you have prayed for. And it's concerning the thing of the Holy Spirit that you said, and also him being the man of God. So when the Holy Spirit hits him, it's the production of the man, right? And it's the completion of a man. So that date is significant to his process of completion to, in a certain area that you're looking for. Right, right. It yeah, doesn't. It doesn't God. mean that he's going to be. He's going to be the perfect man, but it, it's the completion. Right. It's the completion of something that you are praying for, right? So, right. So yeah. and something you need to see, which is him be, right. being the man of God that you've called, you've seen him be called to be. Right. Because that's a, definitely it's you and my prayers. Because I was like, Lord, how am I gonna be able to uh, go forth in the spirit of my home is it together your first ministry is your home and i understand that god will call you out from your home but i desire my home to be a, a reflection of god's grace and his mercy so that when i do go to other people that are in the same predicament as me or in other predicaments that i can show them my life and my life be a testimony to it because i know that even when we go through things sometimes it's the it's the forger of what we can will be able to deliver others from yeah. so that's what i just wanted to i just want my household to be together and you know, i know it ain't gonna be perfect i got it but uh so i'm still getting my children Look, I don't know where you live and stuff, but I, I I started to see a picture as you were speaking to me. I saw you doing a lot of ministry work on coasts, you know, and I was like, okay, these coasts. I don't know where you where where you at, but like, even the like word Ivory Coast stuff like that started to come into my heart. Um, I believe there's a lot of ministry work for you to be done in areas that are sitting off of the water. You know what I mean? So I believe I believe the Lord is going to even send you to these places, to these people that are in those areas to do to bring a good, strong work, a, a nourishing, nurturing work to these people so that they can have life and they can exceed in what they need to exceed. in. so there will be work that's done on the coasts. And um, I, I know I, I just really feel an African thing, too, not just because of who you're connected to and stuff. And I'm not saying that. I'm just. I really no, feel, you you with my business. I feel a desire. It's like a desire of of Africa. It's, it's a desire. Does that mean? But listen, the same angel that was telling me, he told me, "Don't forget Africa." He said, "Remember Africa." And I I I was like, when I had the encounter, he was. I never knew what I'm. I've never been to Africa, but he showed me like car tags in Africa and th mm -hmm. things that were happening and all this stuff that was going going on and it was like I have never been connected with Africa my husband's actually from Trinidad well his parent his dad is from Trinidad uh, so uh, um uh, the, the coast but uh, <laughs> yes 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 but the, also the um when you said Africa I already knew I had a ministry that I had to do with Africa because of the angel of the Lord. He revealed that to me. And you will, and this is confirmation of what, what has been said. Yes. So may yes. they align yes. up with the word from the angel of the Lord. Yes, Lord. God, I'll be obedient. Help me. You, you, you will be. Help me, Look, Jesus. it ain't our job to figure it out. He lays the foundation for us to walk on. Right. I, I, you know what? I don't learn that. I thought I had my career goal all in path. He just told me to go back to nursing school. I thought I was going to do this. I had my life, a little plan and my little goals. Like goals are great, but they got to be godly goals. And I, he, I was so upset. I ain't going to lie. I'm like, I don't want to go to school. <laughs> but God, he told me to go back to nursing school. So well, here I am. <laughs> and listen, I didn't know. That. Listen, remember I said a nurturing, mothering type thing. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So right. there's a lot to that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it made a lot of sense. Glory be to God. Right. Glory to God. Oh, my goodness. This this is wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so, I'm so grateful. Amen. And may, may the grace of the Lord be ever increasing on you and your husband. May the prophetic continue to grow. May the encounters continue to grow. May you continue to go with the word of the Lord and accomplish everything your hands and feet are put to in Jesus name. Amen.
Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you a hundred times more. I receive. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> hey girl, God bless you. Amen. Bye-bye. Amen. Bye -bye. Amen. Okay. All right, guys, I got some stuff to do, but don't uh, don't go people on Zoom. Do not leave. Uh, you guys that are watching live, thank you so much for being here. I pray you've been blessed. If you've been blessed, can you do me a big favor and you feel like you've learned a little something, something, and you've been blessed by the encounters, can you put a number one in the chat? Actually, yeah, number one's good. Or five, one or five. Five is for grace. Amen. But, you know, hallelujah. I think the teaching was actually pretty good today. I think it blessed people. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Well, that's it for you guys that are watching live. Um, remember, if you want to be on the Zoom calls, it's going to keep going here in a minute. You can go to www.thesupernaturallife.org. One more time, uh, Isaiah, let's bring up the Europe tour so people that are watching overseas can know that they can go on the website and sign up. I'm going to be in Holland. I will be in Sweden. Then I will be in Germany. Then I will be in Ireland. And then we will end in the UK, baby. So we will be there. Will be a good time and then after that i will be coming to baltimore maryland all right go online www.thesupernaturallife.org and register today and everything else you need to know is on there also okay and australia i know some of you tuned in i'll be with you guys in september amen all right that's it guys love you much appreciate you it is finished for now we will be back god bless you <laughs>